I'll open the select board and then we can open the board of oversight. Um, so make a motion to open the town of Deerfield select board meeting. I'll just read this blurb. Um, welcome to the town of uh, Deerfield select board, um, board of health meeting with the joining us is the board of oversight for the South County Senior Center. Uh, this is a hybrid meeting held August 29th, 2022 at 5.01 p.m. Uh, this meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation in accordance with the Governor Baker's June 16th, 2021 Act extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency, including an extension of the remote participation provisions of his March 20th, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law Chapter A, Section 20. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy of the public, the meeting hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technical problems interrupt the virtual broadcast, otherwise, uh, unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on the agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. Um, for purposes of in-person attendance, the town of Deerfield will host a meeting in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices with remote meeting attendance um, participation noted on the town of Deerfield's website. You'll see, or all three towns' websites, you'll see a Kind of in the calendar section you'll see a link to the this agenda and on that agenda you'll have a, a zoom link you can click on or there's a toll-free number if you'd like to call in it's 877-853-5257 um, the meeting id is 9110 uh, 604-1580 and the passcode is 570012 tom if you'd like to open the meeting um call the order the board of oversight thank you Okay, so um, welcome everybody. We're here uh, tonight to talk about good things only. <laughs> so we're, um, we, we had a, um, one thing on the agenda we wanted to get together and um, acknowledge, it's a little premature, but to acknowledge a um, $100,000 earmark that was put into the budget and we believe has passed, um, you know, until you see the money in the account. Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't want to just go out on a limb and say we have it, have it, but uh, I think um, I was trying to locate that email, but I did think I saw one from Joe Comerford's office, but we, you know, we all always, it's, you know, depends on appropriation and it's not here in our account yet. So we're keeping an eye open for it. And I think the state is kind of pulling together the team that usually sends money out to recipients. So we'll notify everybody as soon as it's here. But I guess the discussion tonight was kind of to talk about um, acceptance of that, uh, what we would like to do with it um, as a community, and then really have a broader discussion. I felt like we should start discussing, you know, what, what, what are our plans for the future? How do we want to come together? What do we want to do with that money? How do we want to we obviously, everybody knows we need space. Nobody has money, but we still need to keep moving. We have so many different projects kind of tackling, you know, stealing our money, but um, obviously our senior center has been in disrepair for way too long. And there's such a need for a center and we've said it a million times and it's old news, but um, until we get a plan figured out and know the intentions of each town and we want to all stay together i i think it's the best thing to do but i thought it would be good to have us all together kind of talking about that um and and what we want to do and i also want to have you know jen talk about all the good things that's happening at the center i mean i keep getting all kinds of great like notes and messages on all the you know people are really excited about things you're doing and i thought it would be great to hear from you tonight to talk about what you're seeing at the senior center what our plans going forward in the in the year are right now, as far as space for you, space going forward, what do we want to do? So it's kind of an open discussion, but do you want to first start with just kind of like what you've been working on and sure. talk about some good news? Sure. Um, so we just recently had on the 17th, a informational fair and a cruise night. We probably had well over a hundred people in attendance. We didn't take attendance because it was, um, we looked at it as a way to build community, to 
gain attendance from those who may not normally attend by adding the car show cruise night. Um, and we, we were successful in what we wanted to accomplish. Uh, we gave everyone a passport on card stock. So they, when they finished that, they went around to every uh, informational table to put it in another container. So we're drawing a winner nice. um, from all of those people who attended for a gift card. Um, we kind of been utilizing a little bit of gift cards, you know, for not a like a nominal amount. Um, we increased readership by putting in various items. Uh, one month it was birds, one month it was bees, one month it was gnomes. Um, people came up with their co correct account. So now people are looking through the newsletter. We stopped that after four months, but now people are looking and they're actively interested in seeing what's going on in the newsletter. Um, so at the event that we had, um, every vendor said people really were engaged. So it wasn't just, you know, stamp my card or sign it. It was actually informative for people who attended. And um, we had a musician who's very popular, who has her own following, Sarah the Fiddler. Um, so people, we, we got nothing but positive feedback, which is great. Yep. Uh, we definitely met our goal with what we wanted to do with that. Um, we're hoping to make that an annual event. Um, you know, August tends to be hot now as we're moving forward more than before. So we'll see how that plays out. Yeah. We are also, um, let's see, we had Congressman McGovern recently to do a conversation um, with the seniors. That was really well received, well attended. We did a, a baseball, a celebrate baseball event. Uh, recently, we're doing a kickoff for football season um, for September. We are uh, trying to change up the process. So we still have our mainstays, you know, like bingos are on Mondays. Everybody loves bingo. If I got rid of that, people would be very upset. <laughs> um, so, you know, that's, that's a regular thing, but we're changing things up. We added birding. Uh, we have Leslie Farlow coming from New Hampshire. Um, bird club, free of charge, donate, you know, they do volunteer work. They bring binoculars. We also purchased binoculars. Um, but we also applied for six, five or six life path grants um, that are looking like we're going to receive most of them at this point from some of the conversations I've had with them, which that might actually equal out to be around twelve to $13,000. Great. Uh, we received the Wells Trust grant for um, exercise and health for seniors. So that's been paying for our exercise classes. Um, so we've been engaging seniors in motion activities, which is really beneficial. Uh, you can ask Fran, Fran the text <laughs> most of those there. Uh, we've also been adding some art activities. We had a shell painting event recently where we had to reschedule our bird house um, event that we were doing. So we bought prefabbed kind of bird houses that we're putting together. They're sanding, they're nailing with hammers and uh, gorilla glue. And then we're gonna paint the bird houses to kind of go along with our birding program. Cool. Um, we've, we're having a speaker come in Wednesday to talk about the process for real IDs with the, mm -hmm. um, the RMV. So that's a different process. Yep. We're also, um, the senior center itself, we're in the process starting with our training this month or in September, keep looking forward to September, um, for to be a SNAP processing site. So we, um, the staff will be engaged in three different trainings, one September 14th and the other one is October. And then one I think is in December on the process of what we need to do um, that will allow us to continue with the services we've currently been offering by assisting seniors with certain steps in that, but we'll also get reimbursed for funds of activities we're already doing. Sure. Um, so we're, we'll be a SNAP processing site. Uh, we're changing up brown bag a little bit. Nancy Pachorek is retiring in December from doing from being our site coordinator. So we're working to change that. I just found out last week from Nancy. Yeah. I guess she's been doing it for 30 years. So I think she enjoys, deserves to enjoy retirement. Absolutely. Um, so, so we're also going to be implementing a writing memoir type style uh, workshop for eight weeks, two hours um, each session for nice. seniors. Um, if that's approved through the Life Path Grant, we'll implement that probably in October. 
um, October and November. So I've also been talking with Jane Severance at Life Path to maybe do one congregate meal a month, um, depending on how everything goes with our site coordinator, um, Kathy Benarski. But Kathy and the seniors have been, you know, still continuing to grab and go, and it's been really successful. Um, yeah. It's a way for them to still remain active. I'm trying to think, we've had a lot going on. Um, we try to throw in various activities. We have a trip scheduled for October to go to the Roman Rockwell Museum. Oh, yes. um, it is a fee for, for seniors to go. I think we're at 157.99 per person because of the cost of the transportation is up, but yeah. that includes the transportation, the gratuity for the driver, lunch at the Red Lion Inn, they get to choose oh, nice. from pre-selected meals, um, the Norman Rockwell Museum admission, and then some free time um, on Main Street in Stockbridge. So, you know, we're, I think we're doing, um, doing well with a lot of the different activities. We're, we're in the process of getting the transportation and tickets all set for the big E. So people will be able to go to that if they want to. Um, so, yeah. Great stuff. It's so yep. nice to hear that just the things that you're doing and that people are enjoying them. And I love that you're expanding all that stuff. That's what we were hoping for. And Thank you. you know, COVID, hopefully, kind of, we're under, it's not going away, but we're understanding it. We're protecting ourselves. We're having clinics for all kinds of things. I know you, um, you'll probably talk about a flu clinic coming up. So yes. September um, 30th. September 30th. We're working together to um, yep. make sure flyers get out. I'm just waiting for a time frame um, from Alex White. And, you know, we're going to move forward with creating a flyer to get all of that out to the seniors. Um, we've also been increasing our email distribution list, which is helpful. Not everyone has email, but for those right. who do, um, you know, it's like really accessible information yep. because not everyone comes in every day to the center, uh, but we still have our monthly mailing for our newsletter. Um, I refer to it as snail mail versus email mm -hmm. just because, you know, people differentiate, but um, it's been great having the nurse there on Wednesdays and the other days on the um, the second and fourth Friday. And then, you know, Monday she comes after 11 o'clock. Yeah. Um, she's built a good rapport. She's good. gone on a home visit with me, which was really helpful. Um, we're trying to increase the amount of home visits. And, you know, we're finding that some of the seniors um, don't always realize the services that are offered. So mm -hmm. one of the goals that I'm working on in the midst of moving over the next couple of weeks, um, we're going to do a email or a, excuse me, a postcard mailer. So people, uh, we can have an open house at our new administrative office space. Yeah, um, good idea. So people can see and schedule appointments to come in or whatnot, and then have another open house for the um, parish center. So people can see what we're doing on a regular basis. Um, I don't think people realize all the things that we offer, but um, in speaking about the new admin space, we'll be able to bring back puzzle tables. We'll be able to bring back our lending library, um, you know, social time, mm -hmm. and probably have a different space for doing more um, intimate painting items. So mm -hmm. if we have a smaller group, maybe six or seven people, we don't necessarily have to wait to do it at the, you know, at the parish hall. We could probably right. do that in the front area of this bonus space. Right. That's so, great. That's I think helpful. kind of nailing down on that a little bit, maybe just kind of educating the public a bit is everybody knows our, our building is really not not in the condition to have staff working there. So and and our senior center there. Um, and we don't have yet um, a space remodeled in the church if the boo even wants to go there once we have it done. Um, so that's kind of a topic to talk about today too. Um, but it, it you know, working with the Boo and listening to our director, we have found that, you know, Deerfield is really lacking space. We looked in the other towns. They're also, I mean, all of our small communities are lacking space for administration. Everybody's kind of busting at the seams and there just isn't place for staff. So um, uh, we found, uh, Jennifer found, a, a, we looked around at what can we do this winter? We didn't want to go through another winter without having space. And, um, Jennifer found a space for rent in Sunderland, um, which has a couple of great um, 
bonuses to it. it. It will allow us to run our food program out of there. And will also allow, as you said, space for small activities. The main thing that really gets me happy is that we're broadening our three count, three town senior center into the three towns. And so there'll be activities in Sunderland that people maybe they can't get across the bridge over here. They will, they will might want to come to their local um, hub there and, and do some programming. It allows some space for you to meet privately with people, um, having um, space for the staff. And as you said, tables and things, it's something that we can't afford long-term, but it is a bridge program for us to allow us this year while we're focusing on somewhere that we can, um, and a plan to get something going long-term, it allows you some space to do small things, food, and your offices, so our staff have a place to call home, and then um, and then you still have a bigger space that we're using at, at the family parish. We'd love it if there was a building big enough that we could either leave the parish and do everything in one, but there just, there isn't space around here for that. There just, we have not been able to find a large enough space that we could put everything in one spot right now. So we're, we're yeah, it's not the best thing. We'd love to be all under one roof, but I think it does have some benefit of bringing some program to Sunderland. And I know that Joyce had talked about, uh, they're going through some movement around at town hall and, and maybe in the future, there's a small space here and there for, you know, for a program in Waitley and different, different ideas. And do you want to add to that? I know you were looking at that, Joyce, at some point, and I know you guys are planning and it's not right away, but at some point you might have some space to do some programming. Yeah, I'm mostly I just wanted to um, reiterate what you're saying is that we're, we're in this kind of intermediate stage where we we have like where we're kind of working with kind of a, a hub and some satellites, right? We need we have some core things where we need space for say the food program for um, the staff to you know have space to do their work. Um, and we need space for programming. And I think um, we've done a pretty good job of uh, having sort of a, a, a hub and some spokes. And um, having seen the, the church space in Deerfield, that's lovely. The new space, once that's available, there's a place in, in Sunderland. Uh, I know they've already been using Waitley Town Hall for some special events. So I, I really like um, that as a temporary thing, but uh, I think our our goal today is to maybe start brainstorming about what what the next thing is. Correct. So um, I may, maybe I'm just going to push us into the yeah, please. next agenda item, and and yeah. um, and I and I guess one of the things that I hope you'll you'll mention you know much more about this earmark than than I certainly do. Um, would be what are the strings attached to it? What can that money be used for? What can it not be used for? Yeah, and and so I'm trying to get a little bit of that. I reached out to Joe Comerford, and I just I didn't get a call back oh. today. Talked with Natalie, um, but it really I think it came through Joe's office. So she she said you really need to talk to Joe about it. But I do believe it's in the budget, so it's one of those things where it it will get deposited. I, I think in um, because we're the fiscal agent for it in in our account, and we would create a separate fund for it. And then I, I don't think there's a lot of string attached. Their, their main, uh, you know, the, the main goal that we asked for when they were here is, hey, can we have a $9 million earmark for a new building? So maybe we can get you a hundred thousand bucks. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll take it. Uh, so she, so I think it was really, and, and, and our discussion is what do we do with it? You know, it's not a lot of money. It's a lot of money, but it's not a lot. It's when you trying yeah. to a big building, but it would lay that groundwork for, for something. We have done a lot of studies already. I think we know kind of what we need, but I don't know how we go about it because um, mm -hmm. really we would have to look at our agreement again. You know, we never really paid rent before. We would have to look at where do we want to do this? Mm -hmm. What space would we have right. in all of our three towns? Where could we site a space? Um, you know, I'll tell you a little bit about, you know, it's not, it's kind of what our, what Deerfield has been looking at. This is a CCI group, which is a Connecting Communities Initiative. Has It's one member from every one of our boards and towns have got together to try and lay out some vision for the town of Deerfield going forward. And, you know, we're looking at a large campus project um, long-term. And the idea of that was 
taking the 1888 building, which is the old grammar school senior center, you know, we're, this building doesn't work for our town hall. The thought was to look at using our CPA money, remodeling that building um, for town offices, um, and then looking for a space that we could put our senior center long term, but we need buy in from the towns. Um, and do we want to do an RFP for a spot somewhere, um, anywhere in the three towns, um, or, you know, the other the one short term kind of five year stopgap thing we were thinking was this was a year or so ago. Um, we have the congregational church that was given to the town and we thought early on, could it be a space for a senior center and and we have um, secured some help from Deerfield Academy to remodel that space. Um, it is a decent space. It has a big kitchen. It has some space to do things. Um, but it also is not super big. So, um, and it, you know, it could, it needs quite a bit of work to make it a usable senior center long term. Um, but we thought in the short term, if we, if we remodeled, put some ADA bathrooms in it, um, redid the kitchen, put segmented some rooms, um, HVAC, you know, mini splits, we, we could have a space there temporarily until we got, you know, some larger funds and a plan laid out to either build a building, um, you know, and it's not often that three towns together build the building, right? With, with our EMS building, we were fortunate enough to have DA build that building for us, gift it to the town, and then we, you know, we all use it together. Um, we all pay rent into it and it and it works long term. We build up money so that we have money to do it. I think we're doing some driveway work now and different things as, as it coming along. But I wanted to hear from the other towns, what, what vision do we have? How do we want to pull together? So, so Kerr, if I may, mm -hmm. I, I, I'd, I'd like to go back to Jennifer's presentation earlier. One thing that I don't think she spent enough time on, but was really important to me is your informational setup. So mm -hmm. people, I, I saw people that were professional people that came to the, now they're seniors, came to the informational center and actually got information that they didn't have. Mm -hmm. We know from being on the board, Carol and myself cover for, for many years, the hardest thing that we can get is information out to our residents and seniors in, in particular. One of the things that I was so impressed with is that you had those tables set up that people had information pamphlets for how to get more contact. That was critical. And I think that that separates what separates a little bit from seniors versus like the library. It seems like libraries, people, and again, our town hall, that's our library. I see cars from Vermont in the Sunderland Library. Mm. Now, now they may be renting in Sunderland. I, I I don't know, but there seems to be more mobility for people to go to different libraries. Senior centers are more seniors take more of a a, a hands-on mind mm -hmm. type of facility. I think um, one of the things that having the the, the place in Sunderland. I hopefully we'll be able to get one evening and or one day we'll be able to have open so seniors would have access and enjoy the same thing in Whiteley having either at your the old town hall or or another facility where it can be opened up to Ava have just a program mm -hmm. and and but more importantly be able to get the information out such as social security and survivor benefits. Yeah, many, many seniors think if your spouse passed away, you don't get any survivor benefits or the survivor benefits are are $255 from Social Security. Well, there's information that our seniors don't know, and they don't know that they have to apply for those benefits. So mm -hmm. if they don't apply, they don't get them. Yes. I think that's important. I know we the, have that $100,000. I Jennifer and I talked a few times trying to find out if there's any similar organizations to ours that a comp, you know, two or three or four towns. Yep. Working and, on that. Yeah. yeah. She hasn't found a whole bunch 
Um, right now in the process, I know of one that's local for um, Shelburne, <laughs> and Ashland, and yep. or Ashfield, Ashfield and Buckland. Um, yeah. So I've been talking with Julie um, Marino, who's the new director there a little bit, um, but she's new to the position as well. She just start, she started a few months after I did. Um, so I do do have some feelers out to see about other programs or other you know entities like that. Um, so that is definitely something I'm I've got in process. Yeah, and, and why I think it's important of that hundred thousand dollars. The one of the things that made South County EMS was the help that we received from the FERCOG. Yes, and 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 I would maybe suggest that we look to the FERCOG again and try to keep it local because once we get too far out things yeah. grow too big but say local but but ask the FERCOG what would in in Trevor you said this a lot and and, and it's and it's I've been going back and forth because I don't think that Deerfield needs to feel that they have to build a <laughs> for the seniors. I think if we really want to make it and make it succeed a regional senior center, we have to have skin in the game as, as well as Deerfield mm -hmm. and yeah. Whiteley and Conway. Yeah. If Conway wants if Conway to join, wants to. they yep. may want to join. I, I and I've talked to some people up there that 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 are thinking that that may be a possibility. There's there's cool. a few members, Tom, um, who come regularly from Conway. Oh, so I think that that would be a positive to sure. try to branch out and yeah, work with always them. Always welcome. But, but what? But so I would say we maybe we should partner with the FERCOG and try to get them to work on how can we how can we put a senior center together that that takes the onus away from one mm -hmm. one community to be they you know the end right all. right. South County works because Carol, Carol, you've been there since the beginning. Trevor, you've been there at the beginning. Joyce, you've been pretty much there from the beginning. But South County works because we're all in it together. Yeah. And it's not us for you know. Right. It's a great system. And and so we're all into the, all into this conversation. I still think the model will be to have a facility. <coughs> I've always said it's centrally located in Deerfield. Just because I, I think that that's where your major portions of populations are coming from, and hopefully <coughs> some type offering some type of transportation from the other two two towns to mm -hmm. the central location, but also having um, evenings or day also, yeah, in in the other towns, the other community, so that we can get that info, just like you did with the the, the visiting nurse, yeah, okay, the yeah. the town nurse. Is a tremendous idea, Carol. Yeah, because awesome. you get people you get people coming that may not ask that simple question that where the nurse says, mm, "Maybe you should talk to a primary care physician about that." I, I one thing that um, just just because I think it's so important. One thing that sh made a huge impression on me uh, is that we really don't have healthcare access in you know here. Um, a lot of our doctors and specialties are all going to Springfield or, yeah. you know, and it used to be that, you know, you could rely on your neighbors to take you for a doctor appointment or whatever. But now, you know, if someone has to take time off from work or it's really daunting to go down to all the way to Springfield. So I, I feel like it's a huge access issue. And it just seemed to me um, talking to all our cases is that um, people just weren't getting to the doctors. And I have to say, I'm, I'm so, so pleased that Cindy Maeski is doing such a great job. She is, she's, she's seeing a, a huge amount of people and she's talking about diabetes. She's talking about wound care. She's talking about medical, you know, medicine mix-ups and advocating and, you know, just basic health care really and follow-up. And I, I, I think that is so wonderful. Carol, yeah, I agree. I, 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 I think in Whiteley Joyce, you guys, I saw read in the paper, you guys are starting the town, the town health with a nurse also. That's great. That's great. He was at the great. information fair. Yeah, it, that's a tremendous so, thing yeah, to be able Mike to Mike is offer. really nice too. But, and Mike, and Mike is working with yeah. um, Cindy, but it, Cindy has always, you know, our town nurse has always been available, but it's just yeah. the sheer amount of extra hours and it's proving out that 
being with the, at the senior center yeah. rather than just at our town hall. I mean, it's always been open, yeah. but you know, you still have to get to the town hall, but being at the senior center is mm -hmm. so people can have just a casual conversation and Cindy can observe people because there are, you know, part of the thing I wanted to is to make sure that people just sometimes are not even aware that their health is declining. I agree. And so just by Cindy being friendly and nice and observant, she's she's offering health care to our seniors, which I think is yeah. so great. So, so I, I, I guess her what I what I would say in, in my opinion, if if for the hundred thousand dollars, we can have a hundred thousand dollars people think is a lot of money. Enough. It's it's really not. No, what we have, what we have found is in our community is that when if we have a sum of money that we think is a lot of money but it's really not a lot of money, the FERCOG does a good job. They they stretch it and, and group other money together. And and the second thing is, well, combination of a lot of things, but I, I don't, I, I don't, I would hope that we don't just go ahead and and try to um, have a study about what the right. building should look like. Right. Um, exactly. A location, because I think we can, I have a tremendous amount of, of, of confidence in our director, yep. who may or may not be here right now, so she may or may not should listen to this, but I think with our council of aging, with an active council of aging, mm -hmm. with, with our members and in the community, we can pretty much come up with in, in the whole design criteria about building a building, right. well, until we find a location, there's right. no, and, 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 the, and put the mechanisms in place to make it happen. Right. That that design doesn't mean anything to, to me. Correct. So I think we really should look at how to try, how to try to, to partner the three towns so that we can build a building, not to say right. we're building tomorrow, right. but we can build a building for the future and that we, that we put skin in the game for all the communities. Yeah. I, I think what we have to do is leverage the fact that the three communities are working together and have been good partners mm -hmm. because that's one of the um, criteria why we were so successful for EMS. I mean, it was, we all put a lot of effort into going to town meeting and selling it to our towns. But the fact that we're willing to work together, we set up a structure that um, addresses services and, and provides service is the same thing. We can do this with the senior center because that is a huge leverage and a huge um, it is. Good, good thing because there aren't that many in the state. So I, that will have an appeal to get money. Proven track record too. Tim, you've got your hand up. Welcome. Sorry about uh my lateness i <clears throat> had it down at six o'clock instead of five o'clock so i did too i did too so. and um so in any case i i apologize for missing the beginning of the conversation um so if someone could just um share with me um what what we see this hundred thousand dollars doing i mean i i've heard tom speaking and so forth but uh, yeah. you know it's not an insubstantial amount of money. It's certainly not going to build a new facility, but um, yeah. In that sense, Tim, you haven't missed anything. Yep. <laughs> we have, we have not, I know how sometimes about... meetings can go on for a long time and yep. not necessarily yep. lead to any conclusions. No. So, um, yep. But there has been some thought about what doing studies. I I, I came in when somebody was saying. We've, we've done a lot of studies in the past. So yep. are we looking at another study or? No, no, no. I, 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 we have had studies in the past, you know, for many multiple years and we have done through the CCI group. We've done a lot of research. Uh, Lily um, Dwight and Denise Mason have done a huge amount of research looking at senior centers already. Um, and I, you know, we have, copious amounts of stuff information already i think yeah. what we need is to figure out what's going to be effective what's the sell to get the it's state the, to generate the cash for us and to do this it's that partnership like tom yeah. said it's what is the mechanism how do you develop mm -hmm. maybe it's a south county senior center entity that comes out of this that takes over paying the bills and all of that stuff i mean right now it's deerfield's a fiscal agent everybody kind of pays in we all pay out Maybe that's not that in the future. And that's something that the FERCOG could look at. Is it something that yeah. that, structure. that structure, we all pay into it, it's run on its own. Mm -hmm. um, 
it assesses the towns like normal and you know and probably we would still have some oversight of it somehow um we'd have to figure that out so that could be or it's still but i think FERCOG could maybe help us and maybe using that that fund to partner with say is FERCOG. is there other funds that we could pull in and you know how do we get more state funds and multiply this hundred thousand so into things or federal? i just want to share um so i'm going to the mcoa conference in october Oh, and great. there are two classes that are specifically on building or creating and building a new senior center. Wonderful. While I know it's different from what we're talking about with having the three towns combined and going more forward like SCEMS, um, it's about the process. Mm -hmm. It's about getting funds. It's about, you know, other pieces that go along with it. Um, one, both of the classes are being taught by um, the director for South Hadley and Ludlow because they both have brand new centers. Right. Um, so once that, and I'm going to be at that in October, uh, the week of the 8th, 17th, that week there. So I'll be there the 19th, 20th, and 21st. So I'll be able to come back with information from that to move forward. Mm. Um, plus, I started at the suggestion or a request of Tom and with Brian Domina before of working on a like a transition plan and and taking the needs assessment that we've already had done and looking at what is making all of these other newer centers successful as they move forward mm -hmm. um, and what their processes were to get there. So I think between the pro, you know, between the conference having the needs assessment data, you know, that we already have what people want and exercise was like the top key piece. Yeah. Um, I think we'll be able to do that and we'll be able to determine um, how much square footage and, and all of the other things, you know, to make this successful because while we can sit here and go over all the other programs, you know, there's, there's other facets that may not be thought about, you know, that right. staff may need as well as the seniors themselves, mm -hmm. and then housing the nurse, co-housing her with, or, you know, the yeah. person with us, um, and seeing how we facilitate that. Yeah. And then yeah. looking at all three towns to see what's land in the area, you know, mm -hmm. could do that. But I mean, the other piece to that is getting um, a friends group whether it's from all three communities to create one. The reason I bring this up is because while the towns can advocate for grants and fundraising pieces, you know, through loans, we're also going to need to generate, you know, through the community to, to generate funds that way. Mm -hmm. um, so that's another avenue. But I just wanted to share that piece because the MCOA conference, I think, is going to be really beneficial for some of that info. Sure. Joyce? Yeah. Um, I think this is all really good. Um, I guess there was, there, I've got two things, one small and one that might be a little longer. Uh, one is I, I feel like this 100K really ought to be co committed completely to our ultimate goal and not to like funds we might need intermediate to that. Um, and, uh, and I guess the way I see um, how SCEMS came about and how SCEMS came about in a very successful way uh, was perhaps it was through the FERCOG, but we hired somebody who took a look at all of our data. We had tons of data back then as well. Um, and we had somebody look at it and look at different things. Like I remember at one point they considered, hey, here's the benefit if you make your ambulance service a nonprofit. And here's the benefits if you make it a municipal entity and somebody who could actually just lay out what are the pros and cons, what are you going to get out of it? And in that case, it was basically much better medical service. Um, and how much is it going to cost? How much more is it going to cost? Because we all knew it was going to cost more. Yeah. So I, I feel like when, when Tom is advocating for the um, for us to get help from the FERCOG, I'm assuming it's that kind of help. It's someone who can help take what we already have, our collective knowledge, especially the new knowledge that Jennifer is bringing in, and the folks who I don't even know on this call also having a lot of that knowledge to pull together, um, and, and having someone just dispassionately look at it and say, look, your senior services are going to cost more. Here's how much more. Here's how much better they're going to be. And this is, you've got to get 
you know, so, so we have some target for what do we need in terms of grants. Um, I think that's a, that's really where um, we need to be going. If we spend some of this money on trying to get that information, then that's fine. Um, and uh, and if FERCOG can really help us, that's also fine too. I'd be willing to listen to any ideas of of uh, well, what if it's Pioneer Valley Planning Commission? What if it's right. some other group? That that I don't uh, I don't care that much. It ha doesn't have to be mm -hmm. FERCOG. Um, but I think that's what we, we need something that's at that level. Um, and when it comes to selling it, selling it to the town, that's re it's really, hey, we've got, we can do this better and you're going to have to pay more, but you're going to get more. Yeah. Um, and but we have to have something where that's actually going to be the case. So anyway, sorry, that was kind of long winded, but no, good. Um, I, I just wanted to make sure I kind of got in there about um uh, about how we ought to be looking at that 100k yes and so again you you said you're okay spending some of the 100k on that kind of vision for um, water, that right? yeah yeah because not, it's, not it's, renting a tent that not of, renting a tent right exactly uh, however great it might be to rent a tent for sure yeah um, we need, but uh yeah uh, tim and then uh denise um i'm gonna let denise go first and then i'll oh okay yep sure you're muted still, Denise. There you go. Um, yeah, I think my concern is, you know, I understand, you know, here, here we are now, we don't have a place, you know, we're renting a place, now we're going to rent a place, you know, for, you know, for Jennifer, and I understand all the needs, but, you know, when you really add up all that money, it's, it's a lot of money. And yep. so, you know, I know where we want to go. I don't know where we want to have a senior center, but that's going to take some time and some take some money. So, you know, in the interim, we do have that $100,000. I'm also working with Casey, our town administrator and our grant writer. And there is a potential grant through Community Compact Cabinet and it's efficiency and regionalization grants for underutilized buildings. And we've got a potential for $200,000. And in order to do that, it is a regional. And so, you know, my thought is, or our thought is that, you know, we, we utilize that church, which really in the grand scheme of things doesn't need a whole lot. I mean, obviously it needs some work, but if we can get it to that point for the seniors as a transition until we can, or maybe use some of that hundred thousand dollars, you know, with the FERCOG until we can get to the point where we can really raise a certain amount of money, um, you know, we're, we don't have any place to go. I mean, the, the seniors don't have any place to go and we're con going to continue spending a lot of money. Whereas if we can redo the church for this amount of money, and I forget, you know, Tim or Carolyn, do we have um, CPA money for that as well? We could. At least we could have, have a transition no, place. The, the CPA funds for the next 20 years are all going to the 1888 building because we had talked about that before. Mm -hmm. Timmy well, it hasn't, been, it hasn't been voted yet, yeah, but that, that's definitely Yeah, I'm not sure whether all of those are going, Jennifer, but at any rate, you know, there could potentially be a substantial amount of money to do that as a transitional place. And I know we've got to continue the conversation to have a permanent location. You know, the idea is, you know, a permanent location. And then I, th I think what Jennifer is doing is wonderful, you know, holding things in Waitley, holding things in Sunderland, and possibly Conway, but there should be, you know, some kind of a home base. So, you know, those are just my thoughts. And in order to do this, I'm having a meeting with the grant writer, I don't know, probably in the next couple of days, we would have to have probably a letter of support from Waitley and Sunderland. So it's just something to think about in the meantime, you know, we can get back to you on that. Okay, thanks. Tim and then Julie. Actually, I want to defer to Julie. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then I'll see if somebody else raises their hand. Yeah. All right. You're making us all go first, huh? So I, I don't know everybody. I'm Julie Chalfon. I'm the chair of the Town Building Advisory Committee for Deerfield. Um, so I've spent a lot of time over the past couple of years looking at the different buildings. And I'm much more mundane than you guys are. I'm looking at like what we need to do to get the building ready to do what we need to do with it. Um, but a, a couple of thoughts. One is that um, we, I, I think the select board just voted to support um, renting that new space in Sunderland, which is kind of a lot of money. It's like, what it can is. be twenty, twenty-two thousand dollars for the next year. And in my opinion, also being on the finance committee, is that we should find a way 
to get a space that's more uh, longer term. It's not the final answer, but it's a longer term answer to being able to house the office stuff like Jen and the, the other folks working there, but also some um, um, program space. And I think that the church could be used to do that. Um, the other thing related, but not completely related, is I did find the text. This is from an email from Jared Freeman. He didn't oh, email me. He emailed Casey. Casey emailed me. But this was the wording of what was put in. This is my understanding that, that straight out of the email that, that Casey forwarded to me, if that's of any help. Um, the way I read it, but I'm the building person, is that this is directed at actually fixing a facility, um, not planning. But again, I'm the building person. So, of course, I'm going to read it that way. Oh. Yeah, well, yeah, at the moment, there there is no regional senior center located in the town of Deerfield. Right. <laughs> so that's right. That not I hope that I hope that doesn't become a problem. To the regional well, I guess it depends on where we put it, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, yeah. It depends on the meaning of the word "is," right? Oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, can you stop sharing, or do we need this? You bet. Yep. Great. Um, yeah, I had, I was sort of under the similar impression that Julie was. It's really more money for spending on a facility. And I would argue that even though we're renting the space, that the church is, in fact, the current senior center. Um, but you know, it's not a permanent senior center. So um, I do agree that uh, the town is going to fix the church in some way or another anyway. Mm -hmm. And the pace at which we fix the church would allow us to stop spending $22,000 to rent something that we all acknowledge is not, not going to meet the needs of everybody in any case. It, it will be nice to have programming possibilities in Sunderland. And I think it's obviously Jennifer's put a lot of thought into the, you know, how to, how to keep the uh, senior center moving forward and be being more productive. Uh, so uh, understand that we needed to do something, um, but I am also of the opinion, I agree with Joyce, that the lion's share of this money, whether some of it could be spent on planning because we're going to build a facility, um, we should keep it in our pocket rather than try to find ways to rush it out the door. Yeah. I just, I just want to address a couple of things that were brought up. Um, so I've gone through painstakingly the entire budget that we have for the senior center. I've learned how to reduce the cost of the expenses that are currently being expended in that 1888 building currently. I've applied for additional grants that were never applied for in the past. I've cut expenses. We're not only moving our administrative office to this new um, area, but we're also going to be offering an open food pantry, which will have set hours for the seniors in the community who are experiencing a high number of food insecurity, um, as well as additional programming. The space, the church that you can that you keep mentioning is not adequate space to host the administrative offices, even if the renovations that you're currently looking at for Deerfield Academy to complete. Unless the sanctuary is completely re renovated, that building is not usable for what we need. Mm -hmm. um, the reason I know this is because being in this position for seven months um, now, um, I see the needs firsthand. And that other building has been closed up for a while. It's filled with mold and mildew, and it needs to be totally renovated. It's not acceptable to move the seniors from one mold and asbestos building into another. So this is my personal opinion. And from talking with the seniors on a regular basis, they're very happy with what I'm doing. They've increased membership. Oh, wow. We've, we've gotten probably 50 to 75 new members this year alone. Um, and I don't want to go backwards. 
and the community is really happy with what we're doing. So even if we move into that um, congregational church for part of it, I would still want to continue to renting rent another space for office because there's not enough space in that building at all. After doing multiple walkthroughs and analyzing where things would be, it's not big enough, especially if we need to co house with the town nurse that would completely reduce what we need for space. Um, so I'm a strong proponent for multiple spaces at this point. Um, and I've done all the research. I have a master's in business administration with a focus in part on in finance. So I know long-term effects, but we're saving money on not expending a ton of money in utilities that would normally we would be expending annually. So we're saving quite a bit of money by doing these multiple locations. Um, we've got a great deal with the church. We don't pay utilities for that. It's included with our rent. So I just want everyone to be aware of the benefits of what we're doing. It may not seem like a lot to you, but the seniors have been expressing the feeling of being left behind. Um, and that's really important to rectify. And that's one of the reasons I took this job. I just looking at the church too. I know that if just doing the sanctuary, um, I call it fellowship hall and the kitchen and the small other room just didn't seem to be enough for the senior center, but, it, and it does feel like, and I think our intention is to look at that. Again, it's a temporary spot, but if we redid the, um, the sanctuary and pulled out the pews and kind of partitioned it, that kind of thing, we could add more space to it. But again, in the long term, we need to find a solution that's long term. Um, but it's not going to happen in a year. You don't have that kind of time or space. If we had a building right now, put it in here, but the years before we're out of here, that kind of thing. So it's a, it's a lot of back and forth. I don't, so there's a bunch of hands up still. I don't know who was first. I'm sorry. Uh, Tim, <laughs> yours is down. So Denise and then Julie again. Oh, okay. Yeah, just, just quickly. So Joyce, just wanted, and, and I think the others know, um, I've gone over to the Hadley Senior Center, which I think is amazing. And I've spoken with one of their main volunteers. Um, I think she's the Council of Aging. Her name is Jane. I don't, I don't recall her last name. I've got information upstairs. But at any rate, they went around and they looked at 10 different senior centers, including you know local ones, the John Zahn Senior Center, to see what was really needed. I mean, I think you know they, they decided what was, they talked to their seniors what was needed, but they wanted to see um, all the different senior centers and they've done a terrific job. So Joyce, if you haven't been there, I would strongly encourage you to go over there. I think Jennifer has probably been there because I think Lily and I went over there um, oh, a few months ago and Jane, I can give you the information if you want, Joyce, um, the woman's name, and I'm sure she'd be happy to speak with you about that, but it's a beautiful building. Julie and then Tim. I've commented before that I think the building you're sitting in right now would actually make a decent center center. I felt that way too. <laughs> um, Tim? Yeah, and I just wanted to clarify that um, I think we all agree that we need to find a permanent solution and a, a highly functioning senior center. And, you know, the I, my point was only that the town is going to find um, a a use for the church and we we've sort of started speeding up looking at what needs to be done to deal with foundation mold um, structural deficiencies so that the sanctuary the whole building is usable not just a corner of it and if that occurs in a 18 month period it would offer us you know an option for a temporary senior center but Obviously, the goal would be to, um, you know, take in all the advice that Jennifer and and, um, and Denise and, and Lily have been trying to gather together, and and uh, you know, look for money from the federal and the state government and see if we can't, uh, you know, build a new senior center um, centrally located, um, and you know, the uh, I guess the the question is that I would have is what was it Sunderland uh, Denise that you went to 
Oh, I missed that again. What was that again? Is it so Sunderland? No, no, it's Hadley. Hadley, I'm sorry. Hadley. Hadley. So, um, what the uh, you know what sort of debt they took on to do this, or if they got all the money from outside okay. sources, uh, mm -hmm. just so that we know you know okay. roughly what we're looking at. Well, Tim, I can tell. Growing. Yeah, Tim, I can tell you that um, they had had a bond, and I think that was they paid down and they just continued that. So there was no additional expense to taxpayers. And at that time, I think the building, I think they estimated it was about $8 million. That was all inclusive for everything, which was great. Um, I think the only thing that they didn't put on was solar at the time. I, I, you know, I have all that information again in the file, but um, yeah. And what's really nice about that is, although it is a senior center, it's also used for the community too. So the way it's set up, you know, you can shut off a whole portion and you've, it's got a, an amazing kitchen, a huge room with all round tables, which are much better than, than oblong tables. And um, they hold a lot of functions and community functions there. So mm -hmm. it's really nice. And so, you know, the final thought that I want to put out is that uh, obviously, a regional thing, a regional center is is got some pluses from when you approach the state and perhaps the federal government for funding, um, but it also is a complicating factor because we all need to agree on what we're doing and how much we're contributing and who's taking on what amount of debt and so forth. So it's it's definitely we could use FERCOG or somebody else's help in analyzing this and making it a data driven. Uh, uh, experience project. Joyce? Um, thanks. I actually have to go in about two minutes. I have another oh, meeting sure. at six o'clock. Yeah. Um, but I, I guess it, maybe this meeting's drawing to a close anyway. Um, yeah. I think if we, uh, I feel like I don't have any action items on my plate necessarily other than to, um, I wrote down here, senior center tour road trip. Um, <laughs> So, you know, I, I should take some opportunities to go see some other senior centers. And if anybody else would like to do that with me, I'm happy to, to, to sure. do that. Um, but uh, uh, I sort of feel like we should uh, assign out who's going to um, either approach for COG or uh, figure out what our next steps are. Yeah. Uh, and, and maybe that's at our next BOO meeting. Yeah, and I'll reach out to Joe again. I left her a message, so we'll talk a little bit more about this and see what those strings are. And um, I, I did feel like event, you know, this this space would be really great, but we're in it right now, and I don't know how you leapfrog that kind of thing around. It's always tough yeah. to do that. Um, I do. I, we have a we have a comment from the from. Come on up, and you need a mic because people on the on the computer need to hear too. So, um, welcome and thanks for for your comment. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Foster. I'm the Sunderland uh, Council on Aging. Um, I just would uh, wonder if we could uh, put some more definition to what's going to happen with the space um, that uh, Jen has already spent a lot of time and effort looking okay. for. I understand. In Sunderland, you mean? In Sunderland yep. to, to house the office and, to, and some programming. Yep. I know the work that she's put into that and I know the work that the staff uh, has going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth between Deerfield and and uh, their office here. So yeah. it's a lot to ask. And I think to after all that work that they've put into this, it would really be nice to have some sort of a definition on whether or not you're still uh, going to consider that $29,000 um, office space or not, because I think she deserves an answer on that. Well, I think the, the select board voted last week to move forward with that. So our, our intention is a year right now, because that's kind of what yep. we know we have in the budget, talking with Jennifer and our accountant, um, just with the savings and kind of some money we have, we could we can swing that for the year. And that buys us a little time to really work on this plan. And we're going to get moving on the church anyways. If it happens to be a space that will, again, leapfrog us a little time, we'll kind of visit that. We've got to get 60 days before the end of the year to yeah. notify if we would renew. Is it 60? Yeah, I think it's 60 it's just, days. It's just a lot of money. It's not really I, sustainable. Yeah. I understand. Yeah, I but understand. Julie, Julie, need is Julie right has now. done a, a lot of work, um, her committee, and, and the problem with this building is, is that it's really not like going forward, not a really good building. This 
was renovated poorly. Um, it's very, very hot on this side, it's very, very cold on this side. Um, it, you, there's not much you can do with it. And if so, if there was a possibility of getting $9 million or close to $9 million from either the infrastructure money or ARPA money or something, it was worth looking into doing a community senior center kind of mm. thing. So that's not off the table because that's still our long-term goal. And the idea is to have a net zero, you know, um, good long-term building. So um, the church would be temporary. Is this building, you know, ultimately with this, we end up with this building, we're definitely not going to rip it down if this is our only choice. And we put, you know, a few hundred thousand into it, it would be more usable, but then nothing. But it, it really, this is not, again, this is not really a usable senior center from what senior activities people want to do. Well, so. it, just in, unless you inlaid the floor, redid all the, you'd have to put some good money into it. And I think Julie looked at the, at the ability to do that. You'd have to redo the roof a bit because it can't really get much insulation. It was designed to kind of heat off. It, and it stuff. was designed There's in a the lot 60s of different things you melt in play. off the snow. The energy goes up in the air and it melts off the snow. And again, it's how do you leapfrog it. space and all. So there's yeah. a lot, there's a lot, it, it's all confusing and it's all hard and it's, but our intention is there to make something work. And it's just trying to find a way to, I'm just that, trying maybe. to get an office for Jen. <laughs> I know. Yeah, Thank and I think Lynn. we're there for a bit. We're, we're, I, mean, I think right. that's our intention. And, so we and I, I think we that. can find we can do something with the sanctuary that would be really good. Um, you know, once we get the building in shape. So, so just to recap one. When we first joined the established the board of oversight. Was that 15, 16 years ago? Yeah. Um, Mark Gilmore at that time said, Tom, I understand that your, you call it now the 1888 building, <laughs> is not a great location. And, and we, we, we are committed to doing something. Yeah. The Tim, commitment's there. Tim, that was, nine, that was 16 years ago. <laughs> Tim, Julie, just so you guys realize. Yeah. You may be newer, but I've been here for a little bit. Carolyn, that was 16 years. I know, Tom. I and know. we ha and 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 just so you know, County Deerfield Finance Committee, there was a promise made back 15 years ago that Deerfield was going to pay all the expenses on that building because we just want to keep it active so the other towns aren't going to have any costs. Yeah. That that commitment has gone away and now the other towns are sharing the costs on a building that should not yeah. house Any, lab anything. or anything. anything. Lab rats. <laughs> lab rats. No, because they get treated better than That's humans right. a lot of times. <laughs> so so just, just so you know, Deerfield has been living on Sunderland and Whiteley money. Oh, come on now. Here we All right. go. And Here I, we and go. I, and I, I said I wasn't going to this hear wouldn't be this, the last but thing. But when I hear this <laughs> argument about, about $20,000 for <laughs> for the building of Sunderland to give Jim and her staff some place that they can actually set things out and plan and do things, it's pretty short-sighted because right. if Sunderland didn't make the contributions to the 1888 building and Whiteley well, didn't, Deerfield would have probably another seventeen, eighteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 on their budget. So I, I just want to go back. I, I, I think we've been, we've been promising seniors for 15, 15 years ago. I wasn't a senior. I'm pretty close to that now, 16 years ago. I think it's we have to do something. And and and, and Tom, Trevor, I've been working Trevor since and Carolyn and I. We, we've been we working since the another. last. We've been working since the last century. So come on, I, I come on. But but it's it, I, it, I don't I don't want to. Our intentions are good. I, I don't want I don't want our nation to refight the Civil War. I, that's been done <laughs> once, and 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 the Union cross was terrible, and and now we're refighting the senior center, and and unfortunately I'm I'm. The, 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 the cost to our seniors, to me, is unconscionable. We, well, we shouldn't be putting our seniors through that right Like now, I, I said, think. we all, let's all pony up. I mean, I think we're at that place that we all, we all have to decide. And as you said, Tom, it's not on all in Deerfield's dime. So That's let's right. all get together, figure out what we owe and, and get something, what the cost is, find and, a space and get it going. It's and, really and Trevor, a, that, That's the amazing thing about you. <laughs> One of the amazing things. Well, first is that you were born in Sunland. So that's that's right. But, <laughs> but you you you, under, you under, 
just none of it. I, I think it's pretty amazing watching how the the four towns and although Conway's not a but the three towns in particular have have ideas, they're willing to discuss them and and find a solution. Absolutely. And 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 not one of us says it's Deerfield's problem or Sunderland's problem or Whitley Power. It's our problem. We're all in it well, together. there's more synergy and there's more positive solution when all three of us work together because we have more we have more people involved and Proven. therefore the product Proven. in the end is better we have yeah. a better ems service because it's all three towns mm -hmm. it, we will have a better senior center because it's all three towns yep and in that way we have better programming we can afford to do more things what you know whatever agree tim you've got your yeah, I just wanted to second what Tom is saying and, and also remind him that, yes, the select board did vote to approve the Sunderland project. Yes. And you can both say that $22,000 is a lot of money and also say that it's necessary to spend it. And yeah. I think that's what we did. And so uh, I think we all want to find a solution to, you know, if you can solve a problem, you can take it off the table as being a problem. And I think all of us after almost 20 years of talking about a senior center would like to solve that problem. Yeah. And I think we've got a new group of folks who are really committed to trying to do things for the three towns. Um, and I, I'm, you know, happy that we have people like Denise and Julie uh, who are really working hard on these problems and thinking critically about it and that we've got a great new director in the senior center. Yeah. So, I mean, I think so nice. we're in a good, a good place to move forward. And I, I'm I'm optimistic that we'll find a solution. Yep. Sorry, I'm squinting, Tim, but right now the sun's on you, and I can't see. You. <laughs> yeah, I can't see you either. <laughs> I see Another you. reason this building is not great. Yeah. <laughs> you need some shades. You need some triangle shades. Denise has a hand. Oh, Denise, go ahead. Yeah, just just one last comment. Um, you know, I am going to be meeting with the grant writer and Casey, and we're we are we do want to write this grant, but it's not going to be a grant if it's not a regional grant. So, you know, in the meantime, while we sit here and mull over what we should do over the course of the next X amount of years, you know, it would be great to get letters of support, regardless of whether we get the grant, whether it happens. But if we don't do it, we can't write. We can't write the grant. Does the grant need to be actual remodeling of a building, or can it be? Um, no, I, I don't know. You know. Building a senior center. I, um, we applied for that same compact regionalization for the Mosquito District and um, right. the EMS services. Yeah. So it's it's, it's a regional. Yeah, it makes yeah. sense. Yeah. To, this is where we would get the funding to hire a consultant to put together the whole process as well as. And that, that was a starting point, I think, for the EMS, right? We got that grant system, with FERCOG's help. Yep. We were able to build an, an entity that is okay. a shining example across the state right now. So, Denise, can you email me the link with what that grant is so I can get more information to the Board of Oversight for you? Well, you know, the, the issue is, is that the grant, <laughs> the grant period is, I think, from October 10th to November 10th. So Denise, there's a short period of time. So, I, you know, I... I I really don't have a whole lot of time, so I probably need a decision. Yes, we're on board. Yes, we will support this. Give you a letter of support sooner rather than later. Well, and yes, I can send you that. Yeah, if you, you. if you do that, then we can get it all out to the towns and we can write write our letter. Yeah, but it has it has to be, we have to act on it quickly yeah. or else we won't have a chance to it seems like it. That's, okay. That was a so process for the EMS. For EMS, so let's and do it again. And that was a process for okay. the Valley okay. Mosquito District. Is okay. this on the mass.gov? Because I, I found it online. Yeah, it's a compact. Okay, so you don't need me to send that to you, Jennifer. I'll send it to the select board so you guys can look look it over. But, you know, I've, um, I've, I'll I've i speak with the grant writer, and then we do have some questions for the gentleman who's in charge of the grant. So we'll be doing that research. Julie? Okay. Where are the Board of Oversight meetings posted so that I could they're always, listen in? Uh, yeah, they're always on the town um Deerfield website, and I think um, yep, the other, we usually the other are they like always? Not always, no, Trevor. They're not. What do you mean? I mean, we post our meetings always on the town of Deerfield, website. but it's not a Deerfield meeting, right? Each town has to post. Yeah, we all post in every town. 
but it doesn't necessarily get recorded every time. That was a problem last year. It's not on our calendar every time we meet? Are you looking for the video or the agenda? Because the agenda has been posted yeah. every the time. The agendas are up there. It's video that may not be. Oh, we do. Oh, you mean we don't, might not hit record each time and just take a minute. I got it. I have it recorded because I'm running the meeting, but yeah. I know that there have been times that we haven't recorded. We haven't remembered to record. We used to just meet at the senior center, you know, but now that we, we've been meeting online since COVID, really. So we'll make sure we, we get that out and you're aware of it and join in. Um, okay. Casey, before you leave, I just have a question. All right. Sure. I'm, I'm going to. Any other, do you mean question for the meeting oh, no, here? No, no, oh, okay, later. Just, um, don't, I just want to hear. Any that. other comments? Anybody? I mean, we'll group back together. I'll talk with Joe's office. We'll, looks like we'll get look, working at that other grant. We're moving forward with the Sunderland for the year. We'll keep working on the church anyways as a as a backup. We'll keep rolling forward. Tom. Denise, can you, uh, can you send a couple high points you'd like to see in the letter of support for the grant? Uh I'm sorry. Send 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 you some uh, points. So so if you could include a, if if you have specific talking points for the grant. Sure. If, if you could sure. send that way, we'll make sure that we're hitting the points that are important that you identify as point important. I mean, we will. Oh, okay. Work, but you give us the, some points that we that we should all be talking about. Definitely. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Um, motion to adjourn the select board. I'll second that. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn, aye. Great. And uh, motion to adjourn the Board of Oversight. I'll second that. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Tom Fine Great. Thank you all for coming tonight.